Greetings everyone, this is Rock and Roll Spock Nitro, and welcome to the first installment of Shared Trait Spotlight. So, what is a shared trait? It, obviously in Heroclix. Shared traits are generally a trait that appears, usually speaking, in just one set. Maybe also, maybe it gets picked up on occasionally afterwards, but... <clears throat> is usually only used, only given to certain characters that, or specific characters that have something in common. Sometimes it's a reference to a team, um, oftentimes it is, or something about the character. And sometimes these, these shared traits actually make comebacks, like, or just, you know, are constantly re reused. Um, now, uh, in Shared Trait Spotlight, we'll be, each, each time we'll be looking at one such shared trait. Um, the focus will be on more recent ones. So, stuff from uh, older sets will really only be covered if they're relevant to a newer trait. Um, and right now we're... Today we're going to start to kick things off with the by looking at the form of the new Fantastic Four trait found on the booster versions of Invisible Woman in the Fantastic Four set. Uh, first and foremost, form of the new Fantastic Four is a uh, is a nod to a classic um, Fantastic Four story. Uh, I believe it was issues three forty. 7, 348, or 346, 347 of Fantastic Four. Um, a scroll had taken the place of Invisible Woman and recruited Wolverine, Spider-Man, Hulk in his Joe Fixit form, and Ghost Rider, the Danny Ketch version, to take the place of the, of the Fantastic Four. Hilarity ensued. Well, anyway, um, but yeah, they, they were brought together to, t to take the place of the dead members of the Fantastic Four. Um, they did an adventure together, they, they had an adventure together, they revealed the, the truth about the Skrulls and the FF, about the Skrull and the FF, and yeah, then they, the new FF went about their ways, their went their separate ways, and um, would constantly pop back up for what-ifs, honestly, because it was actually a popular enough concept that people liked the idea. Um, in Heroclix, obviously the four characters got each got their own version, their own figures, with the exception of Ghost Rider fairly early on, but Ghost Rider still didn't have to wait too terribly long to get his own figure. Um, however, the first time it would be done as a, it would be featured as anything of anything resembling a, a set theme was in the Incredible Hulk set, where, well, you had all four of them as rare, two as rares, two as super rares. Um, and of course, they were designed to work, to work together. They all have the FF team ability as well as an, another one that fits, the, that fits them. Uh, Wolverine has X-Men, Ghost Rider has Mystics, Spider-Man has Spider-Man Family, um, I actually think that that's it. But yeah, anyway, um, it, it was also, it's also been a, the, the focus of at least one what if, if not more, over the years. And, uh, yeah. So, when WizKids was designing their Fantastic Four set, they decided why not, uh, reference this in their own way, again. And so we get the trait, form the new Fantastic Four. And as it was a scroll masquerading as Invisible Woman, the Formula New Fantastic Four trait appears on the common, uncommon, and rare versions of, of Invisible Woman, as well as the chase that I do not have, nor do I know anyone who has it that would have, that, and, and could have let, let me borrow it for this video. Uh, suffice to say, say that she has the trait. Uh, she also has some really interesting things with uh, Barrier. Um, it has a uh, hundred point uh, and comes in a hundred points. So, form the new Fantastic Four. What exactly does it do? Hmm. 
can see the trait there if you want. I'll read along for, for a little bit. At the beginning of the game, you may replace up to four friendly characters with the same number of characters from your sideline or uh, on, their, on their starting click. All replacement and replaced characters must have the Fantastic Four keyword and different names. The total points of the replacement characters can't exceed the total points of the replaced characters. Okay, so how this basically works is um, you can basically make a uh, you could bring is you can swap your figures out like um, let's say you've got the starter the cosmic class starter thing on your uh, starting team but you realize that maybe your opponent's team requires something a bit more uh, distance based so you swap them out for a human torch from the starter and that's just a, a small version of things um, so really these only work these don't only work with Fantastic Four uh, theme teams as there are plenty of members of Fantastic Four of, or plenty of characters with the Fantastic Four keyword mm. that also possess other uh, keywords and in fact taking a quick look at the various versions of Invisible Woman her option that had that had the trait that I and that I also own um, we've got Avengers Fantastic Four Lady Liberators and Shield Celebrity and Spy. Now, Celebrity, well, Celebrity and Spy actually do show up quite a bit with the FF. Or at least Celebrity does. Spy, eh, not so much. But Avengers, Fantastic Four, Lady Liberator, the Shield do. Admittedly, Lady Liberators isn't all that common. I think there are... I was talking about having the one figure that has both the FF and Lady Liberators keyword, and that would be She-Hulk. Who should, who should totally have been in the Fantastic Four set. Shield, oh, hey, I don't know about, about FF and Shield, but you'll probably you can probably find a few that might have both. Uh, I know for a fact one of them there is one at least one, uh, one, one maybe one maybe four in the set. Avengers, yeah, okay, lots of Avengers with, with that also have Fantastic Four. Now that's the rare. The common has uh, Fantastic Four and Lady Liberators as well as Celebrity, and the Uncommon has Fantastic Four and Celebrity. So taking a quick look at each of them. First off, here's the Common. Here's what she looks like up close. She comes in at 40 points as the Fantastic Four key team ability, as well as the aforementioned keywords of Fantastic Four, Lady Liberty, and, and uh, Celebrity. She also has the In the Beginning trait. Um, allow it's a, allows her to increase her attack total by plus one for each four in her finalized attack roll. That's kind of neat. Look at her dial. Very, rather basic. We get some stealth for her being invisible and some sidestep. Uh, we get some telekinesis on attack at the beginning and the end. We get some defend, which is definitely nice, and some barrier. Um, and then uh, on Damage, we open up with some, and we got some enhancement at the beginning. For 40 points, it's it's not a bad dial, and even without the Formula New Fantastic Four trait, it's still pretty good. Um, I mean, really, all three of these versions of Invisible Woman are good. Uh, I would say that for smaller point teams, though, um, like say for a more standard 300 point game either the common or uncommon might be best just to give you more options speaking of the uncommon let's take a quick look at her uh, there's her uh, there's her sculpt um, I don't remember who was writing when they were, were rocking these red uni these red outfits uh, I think it was during the Marvel Now era yeah
Um, she comes in at 50 points. She's got some uh, stealth, followed by some force blast, uh, some telekinesis, some quake. On defense, she's got a uh, got protective instincts, which gives her barrier and super senses. She can use barriers free, but only to generate uh, markers and scores adjacent to friendly characters with the vengeance of four keyword that were attacked since your last turn. Normal barrier placement restrictions still still apply. Then she has some late dial shape change, as well as uh, oh, she also has some pulse weapon and some willpower. Forgot about those two. So yeah. Not too shabby. Uh, finally, she also has another trait, Reforming the Fantastic Four. Once per attack, you may force the attacker to reroll four in an attack roll targeting Invisible Woman. Um, but yeah, e each, the common, uncommon, and rare versions of the Fantastic Four, at least, or at least the common and the uncommon, have a, also have their own shared traits. We'll get into those probably next week when we talk about just... Uh, Fantastic Four team traits. Next, we've got the rare. Personally, I really love this version. She's got a lot going on. Um, she comes in at 75 points or 50 points. Has the Fantastic Four and Shield keyword, uh, team abilities, as well as the Avengers, FF, Lady Liberators, Shield, Celery, and Spy keywords. And we've also got, of course, for the new Fantastic Four, as well as, yeah, my powers. My power set is really good for espionage, which is good for stealth, and for targeting ignores uh, Henry Terrain. Adjacent friendly characters that share a keyword with her can use stealth and improve target targeting ignores Henry Terrain. Now this could be really helpful since she's a spy. You could use her with uh, Spy Master from Captain America and the Avengers. On a spy theme team. That said, all pretty much all the spies from that set all have improved targeting and ignores Henry Terrain. So, eh. Anyway, looking at her dial, she's got a lengthy one at 75 points and still a pretty lengthy one at 50. She goes for seven whole clicks. We open up with some running shot, which goes with a force blast. On attack, we open up the special power I won't kill anyone. Giving her incapacitate when she uses it. As her resolutions, hit characters modify attack minus one until your next turn. She then gets a precision strike after after her affirmation she won't kill anyone. On defense, we've got some initial deflection, then some toughness. We open up with some uh, probability control, which then gives way to perplex on damage. That can be very useful. Um, in fact, the probability control was part of why I picked her, why I opted to use her for my... Uh, Fantastic Four team a couple weeks ago. Or, I guess, actually less than a week ago, technically. But yeah, um, I would, when it comes to, now, okay, something to go over, something to bring up with this. Sometimes, um, when it comes to going over these traits, we'll be, at the end, we'll build something of a team with them. However, given how Formula Fantastic Four works, there are just too many. It, it's more of a way, means of reacting to your opponent's team. You see what they've got. Say your opponent is all about some heavy, redu heavy uh, reducers and uh, close uh, re reducer heavy close combat. Okay, so you put a bunch of range people in there, ranged out witters. Oh, it's a stealth. Uh, or oh, it's going to be a stealthy range team. Okay, well. Put a bunch of uh, close combat guys in there, especially ones that do high amounts of, high amounts of damage. Uncommon Hulk, Super Rare Wolverine, X-23, Thing, so on and so forth. Um, but yeah, it actually, it makes for a very versatile um, Fantastic Four lineup. And in fact... There's a, it's not shared, but the same basic content also exists on a member of the Frightful Four. The Wizard, who is the leader of the Frightful Four. 
the wizard has a trait called form the new frightful four, which basically does the exact same thing with the frightful four keywords that a fantastic four. And we will actually be talking about the frightful four later on down the line. They have their own share trait business going on. Um, now, like I said, for each of these, I would say the common and the uncommons are probably the best for like a standard 300 point game or, of course, uh, running Invisible Woman on her, the rare on her 50 point starting line would also work. Um, if you're going to run the rare at 75, I would say she, that's actually kind of better for higher, higher point uh, builds. Um, give you more fle a little even more flexibility. Uh, but yeah, it's a strong trait and it, it makes the Fantastic Four quite possibly one of the most versatile teams just you know round to round and can even make it to the point where a player is a player doesn't run the same Fan FF team two rounds of or twice in a, in a single tournament because you know you have Sue swap out you know swap out a couple and okay so Gandor you, you go back to your starting force all right oh, oh next thing oh well bring in a couple others you, that you something you didn't use the last game all right that you know just but yeah um I, I really I really like the idea of, of making giving the Fantastic Four such a massive degree of flexibility with what they can do. But uh, anyway, that's all for now. Um, next week, we're going to be uh, concluding our, our Empire catch-up. We will also be doing comic book roundup next... It'll be premiere... It'll be going up next Thursday because of my work schedule. Likely building the team and also and we'll also be doing another uh, shared trait spotlight. Um, and, and, and to be perfectly honest, we'll be focused the next our next shared trait spotlight will actually be focused on the um, the Fantastic Four team traits the, it, from the Fantastic Four set. Including reforming the Fantastic Four new kind of fantastic teamwork, new Fantastic Four, so on and so forth. But uh, that is all for now. As always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Links to my Facebook, Twitter, Patreon, and PayPal be found in the description box down below. This is Rock and Roll Spock signing off saying, live long and rock hard.